on to some other issues also uh, generating a lot of controversy uh, throughout this week is this, the submission of memoranda for and against the proposed Human Sexual and Ghanaian Family Values Bill 2021 ends today. And already joining us is learning that over 150 memos have been submitted ahead of formal consideration by the Committee on Legal and Constitutional Affairs. So when passed, the bill will criminalize the activities of LGBTQI+, as well as individuals and organizations that advocate or promote the activity in the country. So the Christians and Muslim faith are united in their support for this bill. The Church of Pentecost, for instance, has sent a strongest caution yet to government. National Chairman of the Church, Apostle Eric Nyameche, says his outfit will vote out any political divide that stands against the passage of the promotion of proper human sexual rights and Ghanaian Family Values Bill. Listen. You see, the Christian community will now go into uh, caucus and decide what to do. Because uh, lawyer Akutampao has made us know their roadmap. They are going to the radio stations and then they'll be organizing some street march and all that. You see, if we get to the street and our numbers come out and you see us and you can still pass uh, this, uh, something against this bill, then uh, you have done well. But we are going to cause our people to come on the street and we are going to warn any government that if you vote against this bill, we will vote you out. And that, that is it. There's no room for neutrality. No, it's not political. It is not political. Ghana is not, what I'm saying is not political. It's about the future of the nation. Anyone who wants to destroy this nation, we will not allow you to rule us. That is it. We have to take the values and principles of God on the street. It is this thing that we are losing. That is why we are seeing this nation uh, the way we are seeing. So we want all Christians to arise so that we go out there and stand for the values and principles of the kingdom of God. That is the only way that will bring uh, uh, deliverance for our nation. Well, describing the sexual preference of LGBTQ plus as evil and an insult to the intelligence of God, Apostle Eric Nyameche says the church has no room for sexual misbehavior. Uh, so what exactly happens? We know that um, the Muslim community have also been joining uh, the calls. I'll take you to the press conference they held earlier today. Uh, on Upfront yesterday also, uh, the chief imam's spokesperson, Sheikh Arimiyao, also mentioned that all the... Uh, uh, prominent persons in society who have come against uh, this particular bill should review their stance on this particular issue. But let's talk about the memos that Parliament has received in support of this particular bill. What happens to it? My colleague Elton Brobe uh, joins me via Zoom. He's been studying uh, that. He was there yesterday to receive a number of them as well. Elton, what happens today? Because we know today is the last day uh, for the receipt of these memos by the Constitutional and Legal Affairs Committee. So even for the time is what 4 4 15 uh, p.m so uh, we have some 45 minutes more to go at exactly 5 p.m the parliamentary select committee on legal and constitutional uh, will bring to an end the submission of memos and then uh, and then the committee my information is that for monday we'll go through uh, the bill we'll also go through all the memos submitted and then we'll fine tune it ahead of a national consultative dialogue where anybody at all can just walk into the room and then uh, speak to the issue, whether for or against the bill, which is currently before parliament. But I must say that we are very far away from home in terms of getting this bill uh, uh, into law, because when parliament is in full session and after going through the consultative program, the committee would then have to uh, go to the floor of parliament where the chairman of the committee we we'll have to present a report based on a referral uh, that the speaker directed them to do. They, and and that will be the second reading of the bill. Now, when that report is presented, the House will have to debate the merits of the report and then accept it or reject it. If they accept it, then that will be the second phase coming to an end where now they'll have to move into the consideration of the bill. And that will be to take it clause by clause. Uh, the long title, may change or it may be maintained uh, even is there there even names may have to be debated so you are likely to see the situation where the bill after the 
uh, consideration of the clauses may not come out the way it was first presented or may even improve upon what we already know in the public domain. This is mm. where the real work will have to begin. This is where the Christian Council or the Muslim faith will have to now lobby MPs to ensure that the clauses that are contained in the bill uh, are what will come out at the end of the consideration. If they are unable to do so and MPs don't fully participate uh, during this discussion period and is left in the hands of people who are for or against, then you are likely to see the situation where once a clause is debated and a question is put, you don't have people who are in favor of the bill and people who are opposed to the bill outnumber those in favor. You are likely to see that particular clause step down. And then when everything is done and dusted and it is at a third reading, we are likely to find a situation where the bill may appear different from what we know now or may appear better than what we do now. So it is a very long uh, way from home. This is where MPs who are in support of it will have to lobby their, their fellow MPs to get them to back all the clauses that they are proposing in the bill. Okay. Well, that's a, a long haul there. And already uh, the Church of Pentacles has a warning uh, for some of these MPs who will be going through uh, this particular bill uh, to get it passed. They want it done speedily and then also warning them that if they don't, uh, they'll be voted out. Of course, they'll be part, uh, that, mm. that is the position of the church. But when it comes to lawmaking, you know, the political party upon which the MP is in parliament may have their own position. The caucus, whether MP or NDC, may have their own position. And then the individual may also have his own position. So you have to deal with these matters, the position of the government in power, the party in power, and the caucus in parliament. Individual's preference may not entirely go with uh, the position of the party or the caucus. Okay. If that happens, the individual, the individual may have to take a position whether not to appear on the floor at all. They may have or will have to go and register his protest on the floor. Like I said early on, when it comes to the debate of the clause, that's where you need your best foot forward to get them to back it. If mm. you are in favor and you out of parliament during the consideration of the clauses, and then uh, the opposite side have the numbers, they may dismiss most of the clauses. And by the time the bill is out of parliament and ready for passage, you will find out that the object may be entirely different from what was earlier presented. Okay. Elton, thank you. Beautiful car there, by the way. I would want a ride soon. Uh, thank you very much. Well, Elton has been also interacting with the Deputy Clerk of Parliament on what exactly to expect. Because the laws are made here, but they are made for the citizens of the country. So it is the interest of Parliament that the citizens also participate in the lawmaking process. And this is uh, one bill that has generated a lot of interest. The Catholic Bishop Conference, as you said, have, they have presented their uh, um, memo already. Assemblies of God has also presented. Islamic Council has also presented. And then you have also come in. I'm informed by the clerk to the committee that she has received more than 100 memos from all over the world which means that the bill is very, very important and people have interest in it. We are most grateful that you are here. The bill was laid in Parliament. As you know, it was um, Honorable Sam George who, and seven others who presented the bill. It was referred to the Committee on Constitutional Legal and Parliamentary Affairs. As you said, after the deadline, the committee will meet and examine the bill alongside all the memoranda received. At any point at a committee level, you can be involved. Even if you want to make presentations before the committee, you'll be permitted. You'll be permitted to do that. So the door is not closed yet. You still have another opportunity to meet with the committee at a stakeholders conference to be held later, but the date will come out. So on behalf of the clerk to parliament, I wish to thank you most sincerely for coming and to present this, to make these presentations. That once the clerk is here, the committee will obviously lay hands on the memos. And at the appropriate time, if we have to invite you, we will invite you to come and then contribute towards shaping the bill before passage. 
I thank you very much. And may God bless you all. Well, so that's the Deputy Clerk of Parliament um, on the Constitutional Legal Affairs Committee. We know also that the Muslim community today also uh, presented um, their memo uh, to Parliament on this.